Hey guys, MJ from Endless RVing, and today's video is barking dogs at campgrounds. And are you making your dog that way? You do not want to miss this. We're going away. Get your bag. Check the tag. Decision is made. Lock your door. Need no more. It's already paid. Cancel your mail for a while. It's a journey. Okay, so today we are talking about barking at campgrounds. We all experience it. Either the dog's on the RV barking, the dog is <clears throat> outside their RV barking, the dog is barking at other dogs on walks. It's happening and it's happening a lot. So um, if you've watched any of my, uh, my other videos about dogs, um, you know I'm a certified professional dog trainer. I've worked with thousands of dogs. I have a very successful dog training company in the state of New Jersey. and I really want to share some tips for you if you happen to have one of these yap, 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 these yapper dogs that, that don't stop at campgrounds. I want to give you some help and give you some tips so it can help your life become a little easier and help your dog understand a, a little bit more about what you want from them. Okay, got a lot of notes here, so I'm going to refer to them. I don't want to miss anything. There's a lot to cover. So. Look, dogs bark, okay? That's what they do. They bark to communicate in many times something that they're trying to get across, okay? I'm, today, I'm gonna cover five, five reasons that dogs bark and what to do about it. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you what you are doing to make it worse, okay? So you definitely don't wanna miss that. Um, so in many cases, dogs barking is a symptom of something, all right? It's a symptom of either uh, boredom or they're trying to communicate they're upset or something like that. So the number one um, of the five that I'm gonna discuss with you today is boredom, all right? That's huge. Dogs are, are many times uh, very bored on the RV, sitting outside the RV, they're just kind of hanging. Some dogs are fine with that, but many dogs are bored. Um, so on the RV, you know, you'll see them at the window, bah, 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 barking, barking. Um, make sure your dog is exercised, okay? That's critical. Take them on a nice long walk and the walk is not for you, the walk is for them, okay? Let them stop and sniff all those things. That's their mental stimulation. They really need that, all right? Really important. Um, on the RV, mental stimulation for dogs is critical, okay? Don't leave them on the RV with nothing to do. It's like leaving a two-year-old in a room or a three-year-old or an eight-year-old in a room with nothing to do. They're gonna go nuts. All right, dogs are mentally on the, the level of a two to three year old anyway, so we need to provide them things to do, or guess what? They're gonna become destructive, they're gonna become loud, and it's gonna drive you nuts. So you can use, oh, there's all different things. There's different, marrow bones are great. Frozen marrow bones, wonderful. Don't, um, don't cook them, all right? Raw, uh, raw bones are fine for dogs. Um, you wanna make sure that you are using um, you know, the, the, all different toys to feed the dogs out of. So a lot of people feed their dogs out of bowls. Many times I don't do that, all right? I'll put, I'll put the food in, um, in a Kong um, and freeze it up. You can put uh, peanut butter, you can load that thing up, freeze it, that'll last for a while, okay? Put your dog's kibble into an Omega treat ball or into a Kong wobbler or these other toys where instead of eating in five minutes out of a bowl or less, it's gonna take them a lot longer to get through it. It's gonna keep them active and busy, keep that brain moving so they're not getting bored and gonna to start to bark to let people know that they're bored, all right? Um, also, you can, when the dog's on the RV, leave music, TV on, you know, leave something on for them. In my last video, I had talked about um, a CD called Through a Dog's Ear, which is really good for anxious dogs, but any dog can, you know, relax with it. Um, it's specifically made for dogs. Research is there that, that shows that it does help dogs relax. So put that on if you're gonna be out, if you're going to the pool or whatever, um, just put that on. Okay, number two, um, dogs bark out of frustration, okay? So you'll see this all the time, all right? Where you're walking your dog around the campground and there's a lot of dogs maybe tied up or behind a little fence at, um, on their site and they're going nuts. They look like Cujo, they're not Cujo. Many of these dogs are completely, completely frustrated because they can't get to what they want, all right? They wanna play, they wanna say hello, and usually there's a leash or a fence or a tie out, something holding them back on their site. 
Um, I always use this um, analogy. So picture a vending machine, okay? If you go, you put a quarter in a vending, well, quarter, no, maybe 20, 30 years ago, put a dollar in a vending machine, okay? And you push the button, all right? Let's say, what do you want, Doritos? Push the Doritos button, nothing happens. All right, so you push, push a little harder. Still didn't get what you want. Then what, what people do, they start, start banging, banging a little, right? Still not coming out, the frustration is building. You want those Doritos banging people will grab the machine start shaking it shaking it still not coming kicking ensues it's it's just a disaster this is what's happening with dogs that are frustrated because they cannot get to what they want it's like this vending machine um, it's called barrier frustration they can't get to it if they're behind that gate or held back by a leash and and that frustration is building up most of these dogs are not aggressive okay they're frustrated so here's a couple things I'm going to give you um, to help you with that. Again, make sure your dog is getting enough exercise and mental stimulation to kind of keep them tired, all right? when So when they are relaxing on the site, they're relaxing, okay? They're not, you know, on high alert and, and you know, a high state of arousal looking for, for dogs to bark at, all right? Um, number two, this is real important. Teach your dog what you want them to do instead of barking, okay? If a dog is doing something that you don't want them to do, well, what do you want them to do? And teach them that. Teach them a quiet cue, teach them a strong sit or a down stay and reward them for that, all right? Um, another, another good one is a look at me, okay? So when you see a dog coming, tell your dog, look at me and reward them for that, okay? You're telling them, when you, we see a dog, this is what I want you to do. I don't want you to bark, I want you to look at me. I'm gonna reward that until you get it as part of your repertoire, okay? So again, replace that barking with something that you want them to do, all right? That's the way you're communicating with them in a way they can understand. Okay, um, another thing too is utilize the dog park. Many of many campgrounds have dog parks, dog runs, whatever. Some of them are great, some of them are small. Um, great way for dogs to be able to play with other dogs, um, get that frustration out, okay, of just seeing the dogs go by. Um, please only use the dog park, obviously, if your dog is really good with other dogs, because we don't want to ruin it for other dogs. I've seen some dogs in dog parks that really shouldn't be there, and they, that can just cause problems. So, great way to release some of that frustration for your dog. Okay, number three. This is the one where we have the reactive, the aggressive, the fearful dogs, where, um, you know, they're behind, again, either behind a window, behind, they're tied out, they're walking, whatever. These dogs may have not been socialized properly. There may, could have been a genetic issue where they turned out this way, whatever it is. They may have a medical, um, you know, medical condition that actually can, uh, you know, contribute to aggression, whatever it is, okay? Um, number one, again, exercise and mental stimulation. You're getting, you following a little pattern here, all right? Really important. Get that dog tired physically and mentally where they're not going to, they're, you know, they're not going to have that energy to, to react as much, okay? Um, my last video I did, I talked a lot about calming tools, all right? Calming tools are great for these types of dogs, these fearful, reactive, aggressive dogs, um, which a lot of campgrounds won't allow a true aggressive dogs. But the reactive dogs we see, oh, we got tons of them all the time, all right? So um, another thing that you can do is to desensitize and counter condition your dogs. Now, this is something that we do um, in training with dogs where we teach the dog that the sight of another dog is actually a really good thing, okay? So if they see another dog before they start barking, mark it, yes! And start giving them some great, great stuff. Okay, we we you know we help dogs every day start to see other dogs as good things because they see that dog as the predictor of some great, great things. Okay, you can use the dog's favorite food or treats that they never get, like little pieces of hot dog or cheese or you name it. Um, it can make a, a huge um, difference. I'm not going to go into a whole. Um, lesson on this but I actually have an article that I wrote specifically on reactivity in dogs and we're gonna post that down below so definitely take a read on that if you have a dog like this um, the next um, number four is separation and a separation related issues so a dog that just, just gets upset when you're out they're stressed out they're anxious okay um, so some dogs have a very hard time being away from their owner so my last video again lots of calming tools lots of them that you can um, you can use to help your dog through these times if you're going to be like i said at the pool you go for a hike or you have to leave the rv or if you're full timing you know you're you're work camping or whatever and the dog is going to be there um, 
if you are camping, sometimes people will just leave the dog at home. If it's really that bad, it's just going to be more stressful for them. Um, so leaving the dog at home might be a good thing. Um, don't leave them alone on the RV, okay? If you know, sometimes you may have one person stay and then have another person um, go take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. They're doing laundry or whatever. Um, just keep the dog company. Um, again, <laughs> exercise and mental stimulation does wonders and most dogs are under exercised and under stimulated so keep these things going another great thing for actually this is for any type of barking dog um, on an rv but really for those separation related issues there's two things out there there's a lot of them but one i recommend is called the pet tutor and another one is called the manners minder or treat and train it's a manners minder treat and train and what these are is they are actual treat dispensers where they will reward the dog they will dispense treats when the dog is quiet all right so say a dog is barking and then they stop for a real short period of time that uh, machine will start dispensing treats and the dog starts to realize over time every time i'm quiet i'm getting treats and and guess what dogs are going to learn that way they're going to start learning when i'm barking nothing's coming out when i'm quiet it is these are huge huge um, helps the dogs that are struggling with this barking. So I highly recommend that. Pet tutor can be a little pricey, um, but if, if finances are not an issue, go for it. Uh, the Manners Minders Treat and Train, less expensive, so that's another option for you. But definitely check those out. We'll put the Amazon links below for that. Those are a big help. And then number five, again, there's more, but I'm giving you my top five, um, attention-seeking behavior, and, and it's being reinforced. So many dogs will go up to their owner, bah, 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 bah. they're saying, hey, what's up? Give me this, give me that, give me attention. And then the person looks at the dog and goes, stop, quiet, what do you want? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you just completely reinforce that behavior. So the dog learns, I need to bark in order to get my wishes. I'm going to bark at you, you're going to talk to me. I'm going to bark at you, you're going to get up and go to the fridge and get me something that I want. You have com The dog has completely trained you. So make sure you do not reinforce those behaviors, all right? So when a dog barks at you, you know what you do? And it's, if it's demand barking, if it's upset bark again, that's, you know, we talked about that. If this is just a, a bratty, um, demanding dog, the dog barks, you look away, you walk away. It takes practice because your first instinct is to want to go, what, or stop, quiet, no, blah. Walk away. It always gets worse before it gets better. I promise you that. All right, but if you stick to it, once dogs realize that nothing's working to get them what they want, they stop doing it. They only gonna do what works to get them what they want, all right? Um, also, another thing is when your dog is quiet, praise them, praise them for that, all right? We tend to ignore the good and, and yell at the bad. Make sure when they're quiet, good boy, good boy. Give them a little treat if you want, whatever, but you have to reinforce that behavior that you want so they know they have to keep doing it, all right? Um, and then, okay, then the last part of this is um, why are they seeking attention? Are they bored? Again, this type of, there's a, there's a reason for the barking. Are they bored? Are they anxious about something you're hearing outside? Try to figure out what is causing the barking and then you can attend to it. Again, it's a symptom of something that you want to figure out why and then fix that, the root of the, of the problem. Okay, now this is where I'm going to say, are you causing your dog to bark? And man, do I see it all the time at these campgrounds. And yes, so many people are. They think they're helping or stopping the behavior, but it's actually making it worse. It's exacerbating it. Um, and I really want to give you these tips to help you out. Okay, so there's five things, I five points I want to make here. So number one, you're walking past the site and the dog's laying there and I'm walking my dogs and the dog starts barking, barking, barking. What do you hear the people do all the time? Stop! Shut up! Get over here! Okay, great. The dog may stop for a few seconds and then start up and stop! I told you to stop! Stop! Like, like they not understanding that. Then we pass back by the dog starts doing it again. They don't understand yelling, okay? It's a band-aid. Again, you want to teach your dog a replacement behavior. What do you want them to do instead of bark? Teach them that, okay? If they're anxious, we need to desensitize and counter condition that, which is in my article that I'm going to post, okay? Why are they barking? And let's deal with that. Yelling at them does nothing. That behavior is going to continue. In 99% of cases, it's going to continue and possibly get worse. Okay, number two, I've seen a lot of people spray the dog with a water bottle, okay? Um, yeah, it's a Band-Aid, okay? A lot of these dogs then become afraid of water bottles and the person spraying them 
and it's still not solving the problem because people say, well, yeah, it works. It works. I just have to take the water bottle out. <laughs> Who has to take a water bottle out, right? You don't want to have to keep taking that water bottle. You want to teach them what you want them to do instead. That can really scare some. Some less resilient dogs are going to get really scared by that, and I've seen it many times. Um, again, communicate what you want, all right? Number three, um, this is a big one for me. I am anti-anti shock collar, okay? I've seen the damage it's done. We've worked with so many dogs who have become aggressive and more reactive because of the use of a shock collar. I see people using them on the RV. People have mentioned, you know, on the RV, they use it. People use them um, off the RV to, to make the dog stop. Does it work? Oh yeah, it works. It stops that behavior for that time. Unfortunately, the behavioral side effects that can stem from using a shock collar are insane, okay? Dogs can become more fearful. The research is there. I'd be happy to provide it for anybody who asks. Um, just leave a comment. It, it, creates, um, it creates aggression. It creates uh, more reactivity. It can create anxiety. The American Veterinary um, Society of Animal Behavior has a statement on this, all right? I don't recommend doing that. And people say it works. Again, yeah, it, it does work to stop. But so does teaching your dog what to do instead, and you don't have to hurt them that way. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I've tried, you know, I've tried the, the shock on my neck. It's not the same. Okay, I'm just going to read this. This is from the San Francisco SPCA, okay? The skin on a human's neck is actually way thicker than a dog's. It's 10 to 15 cells. I just want to make sure I get this right. Yeah, on a dog's neck, it's three to five cells thick. All right, so that's what you're looking at when you're putting that shock collar or a prong collar or whatever. Um, it, it hurts, all right? That's why it works. But like I said, the offshooting behaviors that you're going to get from that, in, in most cases, it's, it's not something that you want to deal with and even harder to undo um, than the original behavior, all right? Um, the next thing is citronella collars. Wouldn't use them. The dog is trying to communicate something to you. They're bored. They're scared. They're something. Don't spray something in their face. Try to get to the root of the problem. Help them through it, all right? All um, right. This is the last thing I'm going to say. Um, these tools that I just mentioned that if you're using, I highly recommend that you try something else. All right. Don't, you don't have to hurt your dog to change behavior. I do it every day. All right. Um, these tools that I just mentioned are extremely positively reinforcing to the owner, not to the dog, because they work for that minute. They're a Band-Aid, but they work. So the, the, the owner goes, oh, see, it works. I, I stopped them from barking but you don't know what else, you, what else is going on and what other behaviors are we creating and why do we have to scare the dog to do it? We don't have to. So um, I just want to, yeah, I just want to mention this too. I've seen a lot of dogs too where with a shock collar, you know, that people use the beep that comes before the shock. I've seen then dogs become afraid of microwaves. They've become afraid of fire alarms. They've become afraid of beeping watches because they hear that and they go, oh crap, here comes the shock. What these tools do, and especially um, the shock collars, is it teaches the dog to stop communicating with us. Barking is a way to communicate. They're communicating something to us, and if we shut that down, a lot of times these dogs, you know what? I'm just not going to bark. I'm not going to growl. I'm not going to. I'm just going to bite. And that's what that's what happens in a lot of these cases where the dogs they completely lose their ability to communicate um, what they're trying to uh, to tell us. All right. Um, it's, it's kind of like us. A shock collar is like us walking around with a loaded gun to our head. We don't know when it's going to go off, and the dog doesn't either. It can cause a lot of stress for them. At a campground, teach your dog what you want them to do, all right? You teach them, if you're barking, let me help you through it. Figure out what the reason is, and let's come up with an alternative way to deal with this barking, all right? I'm telling you, it works. I do it every day with all of our clients and their dogs, and it's a beautiful thing. And you have a happy dog who's not barking, who's not aggressive, and you know, especially with aggression, it can take some time. But I'm telling you, it's possible, all right? Um, I hope that you found some of these tips helpful. Any questions that you have, again, leave in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and again, as, as Izzy always says, he does his little, his little uh, spiel at the end. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment below. Um, really hope these, help, these videos are helping you out. We love doing them. We learn so much from other people. So feel free to, uh, to share this around. Maybe share it to people that you know on your campgrounds that have, bah, 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 they got yappers. Please, please share it around. Um, and so from Izzy, Jason, and myself, we will see you on the road. Thanks so much for watching.